Good afternoon and welcome back to the latest edition of the Invest Talk Market Analysis for the week ending July 19th, 2024. And I am titling today's video, this weekend's video, was a major top just confirmed? And you know, I'll pull up, I'll start off with this actually, um, just to basically answer the question. I'll dig into the charts here in a minute after I go over the uh, the economic numbers, but you know, just look at this chart for the week this is the heat map remember the bigger the squares are the bigger the market cap of the company is the bigger percentage the s p okay so this is the entire s p 500 and you see pretty much the biggest names from google to microsoft nvidia meta amazon eli Lilly, uh and broadcom and even apple down two percent amd down 17 percent okay these are not just the the little companies that are having tr trouble these are the largest companies in the world that are dropping significantly of value this week for the first time in a long time now if you zoom out to like a monthly right some of them are still up but you still have nvidia let's refresh that uh, you still have NVIDIA down 10% over the last month, Microsoft down nearly 3%, Meta down 5.5, Broadcom down 14, AMD now down in negative territory after a terrible week, negative 3, Eli Lilly negative 3. Only Apple is really up. Google's basically flat, Amazon basically flat, but Apple's only one over the past month of the really big names that are up. If you want to call Adobe, and you have some of these, you know, these stocks, right, in the energy space, utilities, uh, that that are still green uh, over the last month. But look at the tech sector; it is rolling big time. So I wanted to highlight that and basically answer the question: Has the market topped? And this is your first hint that yes, it has. But I'll dig into the charts here in a minute once I get to go over the economic data uh, and i'll do this real quick and this is uh, the, the business survey uh activity out of the new york fed that did remain in negative territory for the second straight month retail sales was flat basically month over month not great export prices did uh remain in positive territory so you're getting a bit more of an inflationary pulse here um, out of the import and export prices the housing market you did get a tick up a little bit better on building permits and housing starts uh, but from very very low levels uh, industrial production that was relatively strong so you're seeing some rebound there but this is the the main uh, one which is the jobs market you're seeing this head to the highest level in over a year so this is the continuous claims for unemployment some people remain on the on in, in the unemployment line that cannot go find a job and ultimately this means that you may not get a rate cut in this month in uh, just a couple of weeks and on the 31st, but September is now locked in at 94%. And you add the uh, two rate cut probability, you're at 98.1% that there will be one rate cut to now and September. That is pretty much a lock. Unless something wild, crazy happens, that's what we are going to get. Now, I'll start off with this chart here, the growth to value trade. Right, those, look at those mega cap names, massive reversal in the growth versus value. And I want to zoom out to a weekly chart because you'll see there's something very similar to what happened at the very beginning of 2022. Look at that massive sell-off, right? You, had, you try to make new highs, try to break out here, and this reversed in a big, big way. And I think you're getting the exact same thing here. This is trying to get to new highs, and it's just not happening. Right, and you may be going into uh, this head and shoulders top. See what this setting up now. Uh, now, I don't want to call it too soon, but this would be a major, and I still, I still think it's it's here. It's still in place. It's just a matter of you know how long it's going to take. This is a major shoulder one, head, shoulder two. That we're we're making the right shoulder of this massive head and shoulders top in the growth to value trade, which means, and look at the MACD. This is MACD is struggling, okay? What this is showing you is that, yes, you had this AI craze, but it's not real, people. The AI hype is so overblown. It has some applications, uh, but there are still a lot of kinks to be worked out, and it's going to take a long, long time for this to come to fruition. And, you know, the, the bubble is, I think, popping 
here, okay? Um, and you have the names like uh, ASML, uh, they had earnings, and that uh, that dropped, uh, that was on Wednesday, you had uh, poor earnings there, and it actually continued to head lower. Um, what else? Uh, you know, NVIDIA remains uh, okay, but still, you know, now it's making a lower low from here, right? Um, so this looks poised to break down. Look at that MACD. That looks terrible. So all of this, uh, you know, the tech space, I'll bring up the XLK here, um, and that is rolling over as well. And you can see that MACD, that MACD divergence. New high for the XLK, but it did not make a new high in the MACD. And that was a signal this was a false breakout and you're getting this rolling over in a big big way and the positioning here is absolutely massive just so many call options and we just hit opex and so um you know part of this was you know the roll off of um a lot of those that, that that notional value and options now this wasn't the biggest opex out there we'll probably get a big bigger ones in um in august and mainly september and i think that's where uh most of the the gamma unhedging uh, could happen, meaning the most market risk for those 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 uh, dealers that deal in the options market to sell off their positioning as you get closer and closer to uh, expiration. And so I think there's going to be a lot more pressure, especially on these big tech names as we head into uh, head head into uh, August and and September, which historically are fairly volatile months. They just are, okay? Um, so, um, and, and look at the difference here between, look at the value side of the market, right? It's moving up, up. it's been consolidating. You can say that with small caps as well, right? We had that research, that surge in small caps. It's come back in, it did go too far, too fast. But, you know, look at the MACD. It's starting to break out here from where we were chopping for most of the year. Um, and, you know, I expect the small caps to probably, uh, become a bit more correlated with uh, the broader markets, the S&P and the, and the NASDAQ. But, you know, uh, I think there is certainly going to be a, a big divergence here uh, continuing with, uh, and here's the ratio of small caps to the Qs. And, you know, I, I, I think this is right. Look, how, look at this move. This is massive on volume. Um, it just shows you shifting your portfolio from the growth side of the market over to the value side of the market is going to be big let me see if i can pull up i know there's others here here's the russell 3000 name so you're getting a lot more names uh um, here but um yeah i want to show you let's see that's what i wanted to do morning star okay the Morningstar style box. Um, now, value did sell off in the month of, or in, in the uh, on Friday, um, but overall this week uh, it was large cap growth was down big. I'm trying to remember where to get this. Here we go. One month now. Yeah. So here we go. So this is the Morningstar style box. What you can see, look at small cap value up nearly seven percent over last month. Large cap growth down two percent. That is a massive difference in performance in just one month, and it just shows you, uh, you know, when you get this breadth thrust uh, like this, this massive shift in markets, especially after oh, this long trend. There's a, this isn't a flash in the pan, uh, most likely. This is the start of something. I think uh, major, similar to 2022. Now, not necessarily in. Uh, the massive drawdown in asset prices like we saw in 2022, but certainly a reset in positioning where things got way, way overstretched, way, way overhyped. And this is uh, money is going to start flowing out of these mega cap names. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of positioning here with hedge funds and things like that. A lot of hedge fund hotels, we call them. Um, and those are likely to uh, to come in. And you see here, look at XLI, industrials uh, remaining pretty strong. Um, energy stocks uh, that also made a higher high uh, this week as well, even if you had the pullback on Friday. So just so many sectors that are typically set on the value side of the market uh, doing much better. Utilities uh, kind of hanging in there, remaining in that up uptrend. Um, and then what was the other one? XLF, yeah, the, the financials also breaking out. Uh, the broker dealers, IAI, same thing, higher highs, higher lows. Um, so, and not to say that they can't have setbacks, you can't have pullbacks in small caps, 
uh, industrials, uh, materials, energy. You know, there is still there's going to be at, at some point a uh, the correlation coming back uh, in and, and, and making uh, markets generally move together. Right, small caps moving with uh, large caps, uh, growth moving with value, but not to the degree. Right, starting to outperform uh, on the value side and the small and mid cap side uh, consistently over you know reasonable amounts of time like you saw over the last month so um be very aware of that and and, and that's why i say the title of this video did we just see a major top in markets i think potentially because of the weighting of those mega cap names now you know could you see like an nya and uh, nyse um still grinding higher absolutely because the, the weighting is a lot different right if you look at the russell 3000 um you know there's definitely some some relative strength here uh but still there's a lot of weighting in, in in tech but um you know there there's likely to be a period here where uh volatility heads higher you see that with the vix um and the one that i'm following that is also telling me that things you know maybe not as rosy as everyone, you know, everyone's a little too comfortable, shall we say, is the move index. I, sh I showed you that potential head and shoulders top with the growth to value trade. Look at this potential inverse head and shoulders uh, bottom in the move index, okay? And could this start, could this be a worry that, hey, you know, uh, maybe it's a Trump administration that goes wild with debt uh, and, and isn't able to handle uh, the volume of debt that's uh, that's being issued in the market uh the treasury market becomes dysfunctional remember when this heads higher that is rising levels of risk and you saw that back during the silicon valley crisis let's move out to a weekly chart here this was uh you know the spring of 2023 spiked over to 150 and when that happens you know uh, there's the, the, the powers that be up to step in. They've stepped in as of late. And so um, I could easily see if this breaks out, you know, there's more dysfunction in markets and in, uh, in financials, uh, et cetera. And so um, I'll be watching to see uh, how high that goes. It starts creeping up above, say, 120. That is a big, big worry. And I'll, I'll keep you abreast of that. Um, uh, let's look at gold. Gold remains very, very strong, and this is sniffing out, you know, uh, a market that or a, a picture where central banks are going to have to continue to ease, uh, and especially uh, the United States. And you have uh, increasing likelihood of a Trump presidency. JD Vance, uh, his vice president, is a big fan of a weaker dollar. You saw the week move down in the dollar here. Now you did get some strength at the end of the week, but um, if you if you get a president, uh, uh, President Trump, uh, in office again, I think you could easily see uh, Adam adding a weak dollar to the uh, their tools to bring to make our manufacturing base here more competitive, and so that would have a profound impact on the commodity markets, especially gold, especially silver, a lot of the precious metals. So. Um, be on the lookout for that. Doesn't mean they can't have a pullback and it uh, you know was overbought, um, but I still think we're in this kind of consolidation phase before that next move higher in gold. Um, so your credit markets, and this is always important as well. I always say you know you can't really have a major sell-off in equities, you know, 20, 30 percent with uh, with the credit markets holding it. Uh, and so far, the credit markets are holding in. So really, this is just a, mar a market that is in rotation, as I talked about last week, and you have to uh, treat it as such. So good time to reassess your portfolios, figure out whether you are in the teeth of, uh, you know, if you felt the pain over the past week, last month, um, you know, you may be in the wrong place and you need to reposition your portfolio a little bit. If you need help with that, I encourage you, you know, you can always reach out to us at uh, investtalk.com and then we will, uh, we can do a portfolio review and help you get on track with your strategy. Well, I think that about does it. Very interesting week, you know, with, um, you know, the, the Republican convention, uh, the Trump ass assassination attempt, uh, et cetera. Uh, Biden still potentially dropping out. Maybe, maybe not. We shall see. Um, there's so much going on and uh, we're heading into the teeth of uh, the potential uh, volatility in markets. Um, so uh, don't run from the hills, but think about how you're allocated and make sure it's aligned 
with the most recent trends. Appreciate y'all tuning in, liking, and subscribing, and reminding the contents of this video are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell security or to participate in, invest in an investment strategy. The views are my own and do not represent those of KPP Financial or those associated. Have a wonderful weekend.